Well, let's see how well, many people we have. Consent. Continue. Very good. Oh, well, it's already 69, 74, but. It's going quickly up. Just like 100. Very good. So let's say when it hits 200, I start, okay? Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Maciek Levenstein. I'm from ICFO and I will be chairing this uh, sessions uh, in the third day of our Moire Magic um, workshop. Uh, uh, today, uh, we start with the uh, theory speaker, Andrei Bernevik, who is actually from Princeton nowadays, not from Harvard, as the announcement was informing. And he, he also has changed slightly the title. He will be talking about Hofstetter topology in Moiré systems. André. Uh, thank you so much, Masek. Um, uh, sorry, I should say, ask questions. I will try to uh, follow them to the speaker during the talk also. Please. Thank you so much, uh, and um, thanks for coming to this uh, to this school um, online. Uh, it would have been better to uh, meet in uh, Barcelona, but such is life. And um, today I'm going to talk about um, some new um, theoretical and experimental work uh, that was in theory done, um, made in collaboration with Biao Lian and um, Jonah, Gida, Fang, and Nicola. Um, and the experiment, we had the, the amazing benefit of uh, collaborating with two um, amazing groups, the group of Dmitry Efetov and Emmanuel Tutuk, and uh, the experiments were mainly done by Xiaobao Lu, who will be talking today, I guess, around 6 p.m. about um, um, the experiment in twisted uh, bilayer graphing and William Berg, who will be talking, uh, who will be, um, uh, who was uh, part of the experiment on twisted double bilayer graphing. And uh, also, uh, theoretical support was also um, uh, strongly provided by uh, Gaurav, uh, um, who was uh, Alan's um, um, student. So basically, the topic of um, the talk today, just like most of the talks in or all the talks in uh, this conference, is um, more lattices. And here are some basically um, um, uh, introductory references to um, some of the initial work in, in Moira lattices and um, you know, an animation of how uh, the Moira structure changes upon introducing strain, which was related to another talk that I was going to give on superconductivity um, um, in uh, Twisted Bilayer, which um, isn't yet ready, hence um, this talk. Um, another set of references that I wanted to point out, um, mostly about um, other types of topology and uh, some of the types of topology that I'll be talking about, are um, the ones on this page, uh, starting with the uh, papers by uh, Sentil and Vishwanat and Kang and Buffett, which basically um, are some initial papers pointing out topology in in uh, in um, twisted bilayer graphing and all these other um, um, manuscripts uh, relating different aspects of topology in uh, twisted bilayer and other Morris systems. So the bands that I'll be talking about or the systems that I'll be talking about generically have that you've been hearing for about uh, two days now, um, these, these um, flat, very, very flat bands this is pl plotted on a large energy scale. Um, these bands, these uh, flat bands have of about uh, sometimes a, a bandwidth starting from you know, five to 20 electron volts. If 
I um, around some angles, which are now called magic angles, which you can define, for example, as the angles where a Dirac velocity at the k point of the Mora lattice uh, vanishes. There's other definitions of these magic angles, but uh, we'll adopt the original definition. And it turns out that around these angles where the Dirac velocity here at the k point vanishes, the band also turns out to be um, uh, very flat over the whole Brian zone. Uh, which uh, re the reasons for which we'll not discuss today, but which are uh, which we understand, and um, and this gives rise to um, um, a set of two bands which are uh, very flat, uh, which exhibit some sort of a periodicity um, in um, um, real space with a very large um, unit cell, and and I want to point out several things about these bands today. Um, um, I want to show that at every angle, irrespective of whether the angle is 1.05, 1.20, 0.5, um, at any angle, if you don't consider reconstruction effects, etc., cetera, um, then the um, bands, these two, these two bands are topological. I want to point out what type of topology there is. And I want to point out that in the in magnetic field, there is a new structure that arises in these, um, in these lattices. Um, which we'll call hostile topology, which sometimes is uh, not available in crystalline um, um, systems, in purely crystalline systems. So mostly um, what I'll be talking about today involves two systems. The first one is the twisted bilayer graphene, and this is a, um, a graph from uh, the paper with Schauber and and um, um, uh, Dima. This is a graph of twisted bilayer graphene at the second magic angle, uh, not around, or around the second magic angle, not around the first magic angle, where instead of having um, um, uh, uh, one set of four bands, you have four sets of uh, uh, four bands which are slightly flat. Uh, this is the single particle uh, band structure. This is the many body with Hartree Fock band structure. Um, and, and the reason why I'm plotting this band structure the second magic angle rather than the one at the first magic angle is because the experiment is done in the second magic angle, but also to point out that there is basically in terms of topological properties, no difference between these angles as I'll show, as I'll show you um, 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 very soon. And the second uh, um, system that I'll be talking about is twisted double bilayer graphing close to another um, um, flat band angle around 1.01 degrees, in which the application of a, a um, electric field, a potential across uh, in the z direction across this uh, uh, sample, creates the opening of a gap between these bands and the um, occurrence of a churn number, um, of a churn number two uh, band. This is a valley churn number, normally unprotected uh, by uh, um, any symmetry. In this case, it's because it will be protected by an emergent symmetry broken at the edge, which will give rise to um, uh, gap edge states. So the uh, question will be how to determine these experimentally, the fact that there's this valley churn number and here, how to determine interested bilayer graphing. The question will be how to determine the type of topology experimentally, the type of topology that um, um, these two bands uh, very close to the Fermi um, uh, to the zero, to the charge neutrality point, these two bands exhibit. And the answer to this in, um, hopefully I'll, I'll get to it, uh, through it to, uh, by the end of the talk, is that um, magnetic field pumping can do two things in these lattices. First, it can um, reveal the type of topology that there exists at zero field in uh, most cases. And second, it can introduce new types of topology. The reason for this, um, new types of topology non-existent in, in crystalline systems, the reason for this being that the magnetic field has different transformation properties than, um, say, a third momentum. So we can think of the magnetic field as a pumping parameter. Some people can uh, equivalent it with, um, uh, and we did, we equivalent it with, a, with, the, with, the, with a third momentum, but the symmetry properties uh, of the magnetic field under some symmetries are different than the third direction momentum, and hence 
you can obtain new types of um, topology in, um, in the systems. And the underlying structure of this is, um, is uh, projective symmetries of, of, of space groups. Um, and the fundamental advance in you know, the application of magnetic field on these um, systems is the fact that um, you can now get to very large magnetic fields, hostile type magnetic fields, um, um, with, with relatively small with relatively small actual values of magnetic fields, because the unit cell is so large, then the flux per unit cell um, can be of order two pi, uh, even with very um, small, not very small, but of order Tesla um, uh, magnetic fields rather than order thou thousands of Teslas, which would be the case in a regular um, um, non moire lattice. Okay, so first I want to start with um, um, uh, giving you an overview of. The we topology. have a first question already yeah. from the audience, Diego Rabello. I allow you to talk, Diego. Diego? Doesn't seem to work. I'm sorry, I'm trying to unmute, but it doesn't seem to work. I see, you have to unmute. The... Yeah, yeah, I, the drive, I'm clicking on unmute, but nothing is work, it doesn't give me. Okay, um, well. Well, maybe he can write it, maybe Diego can write Maybe it. please, Diego, write this question on the chat or on the question and answer. Uh, go on. Sorry. So, but maybe in the meantime, I just go through the slide. In the meantime, all is being written. Um, I just go through the slide that basically I'm going to quickly talk about review what is known about topology in twisted bilayer graphing um, and twisted double bilayer graphing, and then present the general concept of hostile topology, and then present the two experiments that I did. Um, that I was talking about at the beginning, again mentioning that Schauber will talk about the experiment at 6 p.m. today, the twisted bilayer graphing experiment at 6 p.m. today. Okay, so um, 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 Maciek, you'll, you'll let me know if there's a question because I, 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 if Diego has written the question. Yeah. I don't see anything. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, very good. So, so basically, in order to understand the topology at 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 every angle in in um, in twisted samples, and roughly the the um, the theory goes on similar lines for most of these twisted samples. What you have to do is to first um, realize that as I'm twisting. Um, um, a layer with respect to uh, the other, uh, the low energy physics basically decouples into two uh, valleys. And this was kind of the insight of Bistosur, um, uh and McDonald's that made their model um, uh, so powerful. And one of the valleys, uh, which we'll call it valley K comes from, in this twisted by layer example, comes from the K point of the upper layer and the K point of the lower layer here represented by um, um, red and uh, by red and uh, black, and the k prime valley comes from the k prime point of the lower layer and k prime point of the upper layer. These decouple to uh, theoretically to an order, um, basically in perturbation theory of the um, distance, the uh, hopping between the layers over the hopping uh, in plane to um, um, one over the angle. So it's a very high order and become kind of a new um, good emergent quantum number, which we'll call the valley quantum number. And the next insight of the Bistitzer McDonald models, which will basically now from now on call Bistitzer McDonald like models, because it's a kind of a variety of them, was that even though this angle might not be commensurate, so in other words, you might not get a full commensuration might make this angle 1.01 degree rather than 1.013 at which there's a commensuration, for example. 
um, even though this angle is not exactly commensurate, a new type of um, 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 kind of emergent translational symmetry appears in, in momentum space. I don't have time to go through it, but basically what you can define is you can define a new moire Briand zone for every angle. And this moire Briand zone is defined here. It's the small Briand zone where this vector here of the, of the order theta is positioned upwards. And these are the C3 symmetric um, 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 action on on this vector, and these define this basically this this Briand zone where the Moiré k point here, the Moiré Briand zone, the Moiré k point is basically the same as the k point of the upper layer, and the Moiré k uh, prime point is the k point of the lower layer. Here you can see this association. There's of course another Briand zone for valley k prime, but so far um, um, so far they are decoupled. Okay, so now. If we want to understand the topology in this twisted samples, what we have to look is what we have to look at is the um, uh, bands in this moiré Briand zone, and the bands in this moiré Briand zone will have some representations or will have some transformation properties that belong to the symmetry group of um, of the um, system. In the case of twisted uh, um, bilayer. Uh, these are the properties that um, 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 the bands will have. First of all, they'll have a C3 symmetry, which really takes this. So this is Q1, Q2, Q3 uh, vectors. The C3 symmetry takes Q1 into Q2, Q2 into Q3, and Q3 into Q1. There's a C2 symmetry, which flips Q1 to minus Q1, Q3 to minus Q3, uh, uh, Q2 to minus Q3, and Q3 to minus uh, Q2. And you can see it from here. And then more importantly, there's a C2 times time reversal symmetry, as was probably explained by many people before, um, which leaves these um, um, momentas um, um, invariant. So the reason why these symmetries appear, for example, and not time reversal by itself, it goes back to the decoupling of the valleys. As we know, time reversal takes the valley K into valley K prime, and hence it switches basically the two valley quantum numbers. But uh, C2 takes it back to valley K. So in a valley system, in a system that's projecting a single valley, C2 and T are not good symmetries, but C2 times T is a good symmetry. Now, um, this corresponds to this symmetry group in, in, if you can see my cursor, in magnetic notation. But uh, fundamentally, and this is something that allows us to basically proof topology for all angles. Um, um, twisted bilayer and a lot of these uh, twisted double bilayer also um, has a um, unit, has a particle hole symmetry, which in the case of twisted bilayer is unitary and, and which squares to one. And this is basically a remnant of the fact that you've used the Dirac dispersion to start off with. So around this K point, what we basically used as a single particle Hamiltonian without coupling is the Dirac dispersion of graphene here. So there's another Dirac dispersion of graphene. Those Dirac dispersions to the two first order are particle hole symmetric. That particle hole symmetry gets basically transported into um, what's a, a, a unitary particle hole symmetry of the twisted bilayer graphene, which um, uh, actually squares to minus one and um, um, has the property that uh, it transforms the Hamiltonian in K into minus the Hamiltonian at minus K. And this is the representation of this particle hole symmetry. The particle hole symmetry is a, this, the, this Q lattice, this Q lattice is the lattice of red and um, uh, black points. And the red and black points have a sign attached, this data sign attached to them. And this sign is one on all the red points and minus one on all the black points. And this is the matrix representation of particle hole. And you can go through the calculation and find that the bistritzer mcdonald Hamiltonian or most of the bistritzer type, bistritzer mcdonald type Hamiltonians have this type of uh, symmetry in, um, in a, with, with a small modification, have this type of symmetry, uh, particle hole, and fundamentally, as you can see here, because of this minus sign and because C2x changes, as, as you saw, C2x changes Q to minus Q, okay? So changes uh, uh, um, 
red to black particle hole, this particle hole anti-commutes with C2X. And it's the fundamental thing about this, this, uh, this system, the existence of a sort of particle hole symmetry that anti-commutes with C2X. This particle hole symmetry, for example, can be used to prove things about the chiral limit, as I don't know if uh, uh, the next speakers will, will, uh, will uh, um, uh, go into. But um, what, it, what I'll be using it for here is to basically show that, um, um, that the bands around the charge neutrality point are topological. So I'll be using particle symmetry to show that the bands around the, the, the charge neutrality point are topological at all angles. And then I'll prove that topology is not dependent on particle hole, meaning that I can relax particle hole, the topology will still be there. Um, with the exception of cases when, the, when there's a complete rearrangement of the bands around the, um, around the um, uh, charge neutrality point. Okay, so this is the energy versus momentum in the moire briand zone with the three uh, high symmetry momentas delineated here as gamma, M, and K, M point. This is gamma, this is M, and this is the K, M point. These are just the three the, 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 well, all the uh, high symmetry points in, um, in the symmetry group or in hexagonal lattice. And, and we know all the symmetries around each of these points. For example, around um, the gamma point, you have a C2 uh, um, X symmetry and a C3 symmetry. And these are the representations of C2 um, of, of uh, this group, which is the, this point group of the gamma point, which is made out of C3 and C2. Around the M point here, you only have a C2 symmetry. These are representations. You have two representations, C2 eigenvalue one and C2 eigenvalue minus one, etc. And around the K point, you have only C3 symmetry and you have three, um, uh, um, you have two representations, uh, one um, uh, single degenerate and one um, uh, doubly degenerate. Okay, so what do these representations really mean? Well, let's start with a model where, you, where alpha means the coupling between the two layers. So I have two layers of graphene, I twist them, and, and alpha is the coupling between, uh, between the two layers. And now add to this model particle hole symmetry, uh, this particle hole symmetry that anti commute to C2X. Well, when alpha is zero, when the coupling between layers is zero, you know what you have at the K point because I've put two layers of graphene, um, I haven't coupled them. So at the K point, I still have the Dirac node of the single layer graphene. And this is at the K moire point. At the K moire prime point, K moire prime point, I'll have the Dirac point of the second layer. So I'll have a two dimensional representation because the Dirac point has two, two, two levels. So I'll have exactly, the, if I look at the symmetry group of twisted bilayer, I see there's only one two dimensional representation. So this representation is fixed by the alpha equals to zero limit, the coupling between the layers limit, it's fixed to be, to be this K2, K3 representation. It's a two dimensional representation. It's a Dirac node, basically. At the gamma point, you can also know what representation you have because you can see that since particle hole changes energy to minus energy and anti-commutes with C to X, this the representation at, at some energy which is not zero because, because the Dirac node disperses from the K point to the gamma point in the Moray uh, Brian zone here. This is not zero. This representation has to be the opposite of this one. So if this is, um, a gamma, uh, if this is gamma one with eigenvalue C2 equals one, then this is, has to be gamma two with eigenvalue minus one because particle hole anti-commute to C2x. And, and you know the order of these is not important. This can be gamma two. This can be gamma one. It's not important. Same thing at M one at the M M one point. M one and M two are two representations of C two of opposite eigenvalues. And because particle hole um, um, flips them, they have to occur one at positive energy, one at negative energy. They can occur differently. M two can be here. M one can be here. Okay, and now what I want to point out is that now I can start increasing the coupling between layers. But if the particle hole symmetry is maintained, there can be no change in these representations. Why? Because this is a double representation here. So in order to change it, I would have to go to either two, in order to, 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 to change this representation. First of all, this one is at zero energy at when alpha equals to zero. 
if I were to be to if I would be to move it away from zero energy, I would have to have four representations because I would need the K1, K, K2, K3 here and another K2, K3 here, but I only have two states. So there's no way to change this. This will get stuck. This will be stuck at zero and will still be K2, K3. And there's no way to change the fact that this representation gamma one has to be the opposite of gamma two in terms of C2 eigenvalues and the same with this. So basically, this structure of representations, as long as you have um, bands, two bands around the charge neutrality point that are completely separated from the rest of them, this structure of representation is generic for every angle and every coupling between the layers. This coupling between the layers basically kind of a combination of, of, of angle and the hopping matrix element in this uh, business or McDonald type models. So without doing any calculation, we just from general arguments and symmetry, we've established that these are the representations around the uh, charge neutrality points of what's called the two active bands per valley per spin of twisted bilayer. Okay, and then what you can do is you can go and look at this website, which is uh, a Spanish website actually, and you can find out that this symmetry group, um, um, that's the symmetry group of twisted bilayer graphene, has a series of what's called atomic limits. And atomic limits are bands that are formed by localized orbitals. And you can see all the atomic limits there, they're tabulated, and you can see the representations at high symmetry points. And you can look at the lowest, the representations we had. We have these representations, which I claim that they can be obtained from general principles. These representations uh, at high symmetry points of the, of the active ends and twisted bilayer. And you can see that no matter what you do, you cannot write them as sum of atomic limits. For example, this, these two are two atomic limits that come from different orbitals on different sites. If I was to tr try to build these set of representations out of these two, you see I would fail because even if I could build gamma one plus gamma two, at the K point, I would have K1 plus K1, not K2, K3, which is a different representation. So you can just go on the website and this is for everything you can, uh, for any set of bands, if you have a set of bands, you can just go on this website and find out whether they can be represented in terms of atomic limits and not. So this cannot be represented in terms of atomic limits, they're topological. And this was also something that was pointed out in uh, uh, these papers through the rock point uh, um, arguments that will not, uh, uh, go through here. Okay, so now that we found out that they're topological, what type of topology do they have? And here I'll give an intuitive picture, which is more appropriate towards understanding the Hofstadter butterfly of these uh, models. And this intuitive picture is basically based on, on, on Vanya centers. So normally what you do if you want to obtain topology, or if you want to really understand topology, is you look at um, how the position of the electron changes as I move momentum in the Brillouin zone. So what does this mean? Well, in this case, the Brillouin zone is two dimensional. So um, I have basically two position operators, X and Y. Normally they won't commute and it's useless to diagonalize, uh, to try to diagonalize both of them. But what you can do is you can try to diagonalize a position operator project into these two bands, into these two active bands, a position operator in one direction versus the momentum in the other direction. So for example, in this case, I diagonalize the position operator in the X direction, which is what's called forming a Wilson loop, and plot it, plot its eigenvalues as a function of the, position, of the momentum in the Y direction. This is basically a representative, this is sort of like taking, looking at the edge states of the system. So what would happen if I would get, if I would do this for a single band churn insulator? Well, what would happen is that the position operator would do this as a function of KY. So the X position would kind of change in the unit cell between uh, one side of the unit cell and the other side of the unit cell. And this is reminiscent, this looks like the edge state of a single edge of a churn band. So this is why position operators are very useful in determining topology. If I have a quantum spin hole state, what I would get if I would diagonalize, you know, the quantum spin hole state would be, would have um, at least two uh, occupied bands because of Kramer degeneracy. And what I would obtain if I was to diagonalize the position operator, I would obtain two eigenvalues, uh, giving the centers of say the spin up electron and the spin down electron, if I have no spin orbit coupling. Um, and, and um, but more generally some Z2 polarization, if I have spin orbit coupling. And what these Vanya centers would do 
is one of them, as I move k y, one of them would move in one direction, like spin up in up magnetic field, and the other one will move in another direction, spin down in down magnetic field. And you can see that this, if I would think of uh, this as the Fermi level, which is not, looks like the edge state of a quantum spin hole state like a Dirac node. So basically the moral of the story is that the um, um, plotting of the Vania centers uh, is beneficial towards understanding the topology of the system. So let's do this for twisted bilayer graphing. And what we did is we did this in all the phases where the two bands are gapped from the next set of bands. And these are all the phases where these are all the, this is the parameter regime as a function of the angle where all the uh, bands are gapped, um, the, the shaded uh, portions, all the active bands, all the two active bands, the two active bands are gapped from all the other bands and in the isotropic model. Um, isotropic model meaning uh, very far away from the chiral limit. Um, so now you can see that basically for each of these um, um, shaded regions, call it A, B, C, D, and we can go to smaller angles, the Vania centers, the way they move, are actually uh, very similar to a quantum spin hole state. So, you know, they might cross a little bit, but there, if you look at this B phase, which is kind of representative or D phase, they look exactly like the quantum spin hole set, uh, state. But of course, the symmetries are wrong because this is a sim system without spin orbit coupling. So it doesn't have per valley, it doesn't even have time reversal. Time reversal doesn't square to minus one. So the, so it, so the Vania centers look like a quantum spin hole state, but uh, the symmetries are wrong. But however, what we can point out is that uh, it looks like two flavors of electrons, one in up magnetic field, Cairo, and one in down magnetic field, pseudo magnetic field, let's call this pseudo magnetic field, anti Cairo. And this is something, this is a picture that was actually pointed out this up and down pseudo flavors by uh, in the paper of, of, uh, of Shidai. Okay, so I'm gonna basically, I don't have time to go through exactly what, you know, how you, how you get to these conclusions, but I'm gonna point out several things about this, um, this uh, uh, Vanya spectrum, which is the Vanya spectrum that, that, uh, that, looks, that, is, that looks like a, um, a quantum spin hole with the wrong symmetries. Uh, and these things have also been pointed out by uh, other papers uh, cited uh, here, uh, such as uh, Poet on and on and on. So basically, this, these, you can always ask when you see two Vanya centers crossing, you can ask why is the crossing stable? And the reason why it's stable is because of this C2 times T um, uh, symmetry. Then what you can ask is you can ask what would happen if, um, you know, I put boundaries on the system. And what turns out to happen in these systems, because these, this crossing of the Vanya state is, of the Vanya centers, of the two Vanya centers, of the two active bands, is protected by C2 times time reversal. And C2 is a symmetry that doesn't leave an edge locally invariant. For example, if I make an edge, if I make two edges, C2 maps one edge into the other, then this system will not have uh, gapless modes, even though it's topological, and and it will not have gapless modes, um, but it will have what's called corner states. So this is an example of a higher order uh, topological system that will have corner states. Now, of course, experimentally, it's not very easy to determine corner states because you know their position might actually uh, um, um, be arbitrary. If I take a, a circular sample, even if I can make it perfect. The only thing that um, uh, having such a Vanya state, a Vanya center uh, um, um, pictured will tell you is that there's going to be two corner states somewhere along the circle, but they don't even have to be in any gap. They can actually be um, um, not in a ball gap. They can be, they can coincide energetically with the active bands, the passive bands. So obtaining this type, obtaining, finding the topology of this type of a Vanya flow protected by C2Z times T symmetry is very different than finding the topology of this type of Vanya flow protected by uh, time reversal symmetry, which would be quantum hole state by spin full time reversal, which would be a quantum hole state, a quantum spin hole state, um, because a quantum spin hole state would have edge states and you could do edge transport like in the modern time experiment, or, uh, but this one does not have, has corner states, which so far 
um, um, in 2D samples are pretty useless spectroscopically. So the idea is how to find this type of topology, how to find, so we know the two bands are topological, how do you find the topology experimentally, uh, given that there's no edge spectroscopic uh, measurement you can do so far. Now, the next model that I wanna, uh, that I wanna uh, um, um, point out uh, topology in is the uh, twisted double bilayer model. And I'll go through this very fast, but basically the situation is similar. Here you have two, here you have a, an AB stack bilayer and you take two of them and you twist them. And what you get is again, a Bistrotter type, Bistrotter McDonald's type Hamiltonian. Um, this is how it looks in real space. This um, is, um, you know, some hopping between the AB layers, and this is between D eta is the hopping between the uh, two AB layers. This is the hopping within one AB layer, and this is the potential a Z magnetic, a Z electric field that you put on the sample. And you have a different set of symmetries. Here you also have a particle hole that you can prove to. Um, that you can that you can make that you can um, uh, use to 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 prove things. You have a different set of symmetries, uh, and it turns out that without electric field, there's a quadratic touching at the km and km prime points, the Moret points, which is protected by these two symmetries, c two x times p and c three c three. It doesn't matter; you can just work this out. The moral of the story is that you can understand this. Um, this very easily by thinking that the you know first um, order hopping or nearest neighbor hopping a b stack graphing has a quadratic point at the k point which becomes uh, which becomes now the the uh, k more point the k point of the lower layer becomes the k more point the k point of the upper layer becomes uh, the upper a b layer becomes the k more prime point of the of the uh, uh, double twisted um, um, the double um, uh, AB twisted uh, um, um, graphing, and and um, that's how we can understand the uh, quadratic dispersion, basically almost at at each value. Now, the more there is the, a question uh, from the audience uh, from Mohamed Alezi. Does the proof for topology of the gap two active bands? still apply for twist angles where the two active bands are connected to higher bands. Yeah, so, 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 for, the, so for those, it, so, so in that case, you cannot just project to, you need to stop all, so you know, in the, in the projector that basically, that, that you can project into a set of gap bands. So if I had more bands, if I had more bands, I would have to project in, 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 um, in more bands rather than just in the two um, lowest bands. And then this is, um, then you would basically lose that topology. So this is, in short, this topology is only present where you, when you have, when you can project just into the two active bands. Um, so when they're, you know, when they're fully gapped from the other sets of bands. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, good question. So, okay, so now what we can ask is what happens when I take uh, electric field and um, add an electric field uh, on this twisted double bilayer sample. And what happens is that the electric field would break the C2X symmetry, which I've said was necessary, C2X times P, was necessary to protect the, these, this quadratic touching. And it would gap this quadratic touching. Now we know what happens when you gap a quadratic touching, you basically create a churn number, okay? And since the Cape and KM prime points of one, of one valley um, a twisted double bilayer uh, model have basically the same winding since they come from um, the K, both they come from the K points of the upper and lower layer. So KM point is the K point of the lower layer, KM prime point is the KM prime point of the upper layer, AB stacked. Um, um, a graphing, they both have the same winding. So you get an opening, a gap with a turn number of two per valley. And this is what happens. You can clearly see it here. This is our some plots where you get a turn number two per valley. And basically gapping the quadratic nodes will give you a turn number plus minus two per valley 
um, um, because the original uh, crossings were quadratic. But again, this is a valley to a number, okay? So, so if you ask how to uncover to the topology here, just without, just from, just directly, without, um, you know, going through experiments, uh, through other many body experiments, just from single particle, how to uncover topology. You know, some, there's an argument to be made that for, for the, for the um, uh, people that know Christy Baller, that uh, Andrea Young's experiment of turn number one in the many body state uh, basically proved that there's topology in the single particle uh, spectrum. But I'm talking about uncovering topology directly uh, without, without using just from the single particle spectrum. And I claim that this is hard for several reasons. As I said, in twisted bilayer, um, there's no edge states, there's only corner states. They can be moved within the bandwidth. Spectroscopically, it's not easy to find them. In twisted double bilayer, the topology per valley has a churn number. Um, hence, per valley, there exist two edge states. But valley is this quantum number in the bulk, it's, it's an emergent low energy symmetry in the bulk, which basically means that one value of, of uh, the AB of the uh, Moiré um, um, Hamiltonian does not couple to the other, to the Moiré Hamilton that comes from the other value. But if I have, but it's not really a good edge symmetry. So if I have two propagating edge states from one value on the edge and two counter propagating edge states from the other value on the edge, um, there's not much that can prevent me from coupling them and opening a gap. So, um, so it's not clear how to do, again, at least for me, um, uh, spectroscopic measurements to find um, um, the fact that twisted double bilayer has a value churn number. So that's what basically um, started the project to think about a way to identify these topological states from the bulk directly, um, rather than going through their, you know, edge bulk correspondence, which in this case it's a bit, uh, it's 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 uh, it's a bit tricky. So that brought us to this thing called Hofstadter topology, and and um, really this is based on the fact that the lattice constant in in these uh, Mario systems is so large that it can allow um, the insertion of you know units of magnetic flux uh, per uh, per unit cell, and and I wanted to give you a very quick example of what happens when you when you um, have um, when you add a magnetic flux per unit cell to first a trivial state and then to a topological state, and I wanted to show you that adding a magnetic field to the system basically uncovers uncovers the zero field topology of of your state. So, so first, I'm taking just ap appealing to uh, to everyone's Hofstadter um, knowledge to show you what happens to a single band that's single, so it cannot be topological, it's single in the full spectrum of the system, a single band, non-topological band, when I add uh, um, Hofstadter magnetic fields, so large magnetic fields. Well, I'll have a, a um, Landau fan coming from um, the top of the band, a Landau fan coming from the bottom of the band. Uh, these will have some, mis some mismatch in churn numbers here, this Landau field here. Uh, and there's going to be a Van Hoff singularity. It's going to take care of these uh, mismatch in the churn numbers. And this is going to give the Hofstadter butterfly here, where you notice that basically, and this is not always true, but it's almost, it's basically true in a lot of problems. You notice the bandwidth of the Hofstadter butterfly is smaller at finite b than at zero b. Okay? And this is basically. The reason why this is smaller than finite b and zero b is basically the fact that the Landau fans move inside. So these are Landau levels as I apply large magnetic, as I apply some magnetic field, you know, uh, larger and larger. They move, they move inside. Okay, and this is how the Hofstadter looks um, of the of a single band. Now let's say I have two trivial bands. Okay, what's going to separate it by a gap? What's going to be uh, true is that as I add magnetic field, one of them is going to have a hostile butterfly. The other one is going to have maybe slightly different hostile butterflies to the different order uh, gap, uh, if it is different um, uh, hopping parameters. 
but the full gap between the two trivial bands is going to stay um, um, open in most cases. There are some exceptions for obstructive atomic limits that I won't talk about now, but it's going to be, uh, um, if there's two trivial bands, they're going to, the, the gap will stay open. So this basically tells you if these bands are trivial, this gap has no topological number, no say churn number now. This basically tells you that churn number zero band can support itself open for a long range of magnetic fields. Now let's see what happens if instead um, I now have a system which is topological, so it must have at least two bands in the whole spectrum. And I take this to be a, a, uh, a, a churn system. And this is a churn number minus one, churn number one band. And you kind of draw the Hofstadter butterfly and you're gonna have similar sets of bands coming, going from the top band and from the bottom band up. But you're gonna have kind of a rebel lambda level that's been, uh, you know, that you can do from K dot P uh, arguments, even at small, at small magnetic field, you can do this, um, uh, but you can, prove it in more general terms, you're going to have a set of lambda levels connecting the, 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 this churn number one um, 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 gap. So the Hofstadter butterfly would look very different here, which basically tells you that churn, churn gaps or gaps with a churn number cannot sustain themselves over a large value of magnetic field. And you can see the Hofstadter butterfly here. Here, for example, this part comes from the hostile butterfly within this band, this part comes from the hostile butterfly within this band, but there's now a, a, um, a um, um, closing of the, of the uh, gap, of the single particle gap. There's a closing of the single particle gap um, um, in, in, ho in hostile magnetic fields. So this is flux zero to pi um uh, by the magnetic field and this basically tells you that this churn one gap cannot sustain itself over for a field going from zero to two pi here um, um for example okay so let's understand why this band cannot sustain itself. there's many ways of understanding this it's actually quite simple uh but um, um one way of understanding it um uh, that was actually uh, quite uh, quite nice and uh, point now by Biao is the following. If I have a 2D system of churn number C between a conduction band of a churn, of, of churn number minus C and a valence band of churn number C, that is forced to close at magnetic flux phi over phi zero is one over C. Okay, so this is the fundamental, that's very important theorem that we'll use for the twisted double bilayer, okay? And this is imposed by the Strada formula. It's basically the fact that you can prove it through many other, uh, through many other ways actually but this is the most physical way because the Strada formula tells you that the number of states in a churn, in a, in a gap of churn number C has to vary with the flux. So it has to vary as, you know, one over area one plus um, uh, this density plus uh, the churn number times um, the flux. So this is just the imposition of a Strada formula. So if I had a churn number one here, okay, and I had just had two bands, then by the time I reach flux one, I've depleted this whole band because this NC has become two here, okay, at chart number one at flux one, okay, one plus one is two. So I've depleted this band. So this gap cannot sustain itself and is closing. If I have turned, if I start with the chart number two here, then this, then the gap, the single particle gap at flux zero has to close by the time I reach uh, uh, a flux of uh, one over two units of flux, phi over phi zero is one over C. So this is kind of a very strong um, 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 principle that you can basically test the to topology in zero field. Um, uh, you can test when the gap is closing and then you can see, um, you can see if you had, the, for example, a valid churn number. And I want to point out this is opposite from what we know as regular Landau levels, where increasing B basically results in larger Landau gaps in gallium arsenide, I'd say. This is you increase B and your gap shrinks. So basically it means that a zero field topological state or churn state certainly has a bulk imprint in magnetic field. And I want to point out that many such states, many um, um, zero field states have an imprint in, in the Hofstadter spectrum in the magnetic field. And that also you can get to 
new types of symmetries and new types of states that um, as a function of magnetic field that don't exist in crystalline systems. So what's fundamental about Hofstadter fields? Well, what's fundamental about Hofstadter fields is that with spiral substitution, so this is all within a pyrrhal formalism, with some pyrrhal substitution, the Hamiltonian at phi plus an integer number of fluxes. Another question. Yes. Uh, this is from Dimitri uh, Chichinadze. Uh, Dimitri, do you want to ask it uh, directly? Try, we shall we try? Let me try to unmute you. Allow to talk. Can you talk? Uh, can you hear me? Yes! Ah! Okay, Please perfect. Please ask the question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so uh, my question is this. So in your, I think in your uh, 2019 Marsh meeting talk, you mentioned that this particle hole symmetry, which re is somewhat required to get the picture for um, closing the gap between two Hofstadter butterflies, requires, well, the approximate particle hole symmetry. So you don't have to have an explicit symmetry, but at least some approximate form of it. Could you elaborate on how you define these approximate symmetry in a quantitative way? So, so I'm not, uh, yeah, so I don't remember exactly what I said. I hope I didn't say anything uh, wrong. So certainly, certainly for the churn number, uh, for this churn number, there's no need. Here, I, you're right, there's, the, these models are particle hole symmetric, but there's no there's, there's, so if I said this, then I was, I, I, then I misspoke. Um, um, there's certainly no need for it to be particle hole symmetric. I can actually, I can, the churn number, a zero field churn gap can never, can never, um, um, can never sustain itself basically with, with or without particle hole symmetry. So I can change, so for example, this guy, this this guy will not is not particle hole symmetric really, I think, uh, and it can't sustain itself a churn number uh, field. Now there are some there are some uh, um, models where you might need particle hole symmetry, but that's not generic. So I don't so so basically it's not needed for what I'm saying here. So that's that's the question. So if I said that I, you know, it was mis misspeaking. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you. There is another question from Mohammed Amitri. Mohammed, do you want to speak? You you can speak now, I guess. Or no? Can you speak now? No, it doesn't work in his case. Why? I don't know. Okay, I read the question now. Doesn't it? okay? I read the question. What changes? If the magnitude of turn numbers for conduction and valence balance are not equal in magnitude, say minus one and two, would the gap still close in similar way? That's that's a very good question. So basically, yeah. So that's a very good question. So so then you need a third band. So if you have if I have turn number two and turn number minus one, whatever, I need another turn band of turn number minus one to get all of the you know the sum of the all the bands in the system at zero field, the sum of their churn numbers has to be zero. So I get, I would have another band that has some other churn number that, um, so then some gaps would close, you know, like you'd have different gaps at zero field between the band of two, one, minus one and minus one, and some gaps would close at uh, different fields. So you'd certainly get the closing of all the gaps at some point because, because no churn number band can sustain itself from so, so just by just by the straight up formula it keeps accumulating states so at some point at in this this these are all for two bands as as uh, as uh, was as, uh, clearly pointed out but if i had another band of another churn number this other gap would also close and it's what matters is the number of states below it basically the number of the churn number below that gap so when you ask when does the gap close thank you for that Okay, so basically what I wanna point out very quickly um, is that, is that, um, um, is that what matters for this magnetic field, um, for these magnetic field proofs is actually the fact that, uh, you know, the Hamiltonian is, is um, periodic in a Pyrrhus phase approximation. 
uh, with a periodicity, which is two pi times an integer, where this integer is determined by the condition that all the closed hoppings uh, 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 loops in, in circle an integer number of flux quanta. And with this, you can sort of think as this, as the magnetic field as a KZ momentum, because this is exactly some block periodicity in, in the KZ direction, for example. And you can think of this U as some unitary matrix. Now, this, the fact that this U actually um, can be non-trivial is the reason why the soft interfaces can implement symmetries that do not exist in crystalline systems. So from now on, we can think of the B as the KZ momentum, the magnetic field through the symmetry, and the two-dimensional KX, KY sample is the two-dimensional KX, KY sample, and we think of KX, KY, and B as the three, as three momentas. And you can see that for some symmetries, the magnetic field transforms indeed like a third momentum. So for example, for time reversal, which take K to minus K, also takes B to minus B, or the Peierls phases changes the I in the Peierls phases, so it takes Phi to minus Phi, and this acts like the case momentum. Particle hole turns the same way. C2Z, C2X also act on the magnetic field like they would act on the case momentum. But there are situations where, um, um, where they don't, and I'll point them out uh, very soon. So, okay, so now let me give you some examples of what topological states will do as I pump the electric field. So, um, for example, if I now have at, at, at zero magnetic field a quantum spin whole state rather than a quantum uh, whole state, then a quantum spin whole state with only time reversal can lead to two, pop, two, two situations. If this flux has n odd as a function of the magnetic field, it's a 3D strong Ti. So if I was to consider Kx, Ky, and magnetic field as Kx, Ky, Kz, if this spiral phases, this factor n is odd, then the Hamiltonian in magnetic field, as I change the magnetic field from zero to, to, to flux from zero to pi, would be a strong Ti. It would be a weak or a strong Ti if, if this n is even, but if this n is odd, it's a strong Ti. A magnetic field zero fragile spinless state with time reversal and situ symmetry leads to a gap closing. So this is the situation that we'll be talking about actually for twisted bilayer, this gap closing that happens in a fragile state. Um, in some situations. And there's another now, there's another uh, situation, which is um, that this phase that I said here, U, can lead to symmetries which are not crystalline. And this, for example, is one case. There's a case, which I don't have time to go through, where you have that this U times C2 times time reversal squared is equal to minus one. So this gives you another C2T symmetry, which is U times C2T, which squares to minus one instead of one. And this is not possible in spinful or spinless systems because C2T squared is always, always um, equal to um, uh, one, whether it's spinful or spinless. So this is basically a projective symmetry that, that mm -hmm. comes into this, uh, into, this, uh, into this game. Okay, so I don't have time to go through it, but what I wanna point out is that there's more symmetries for which the magnetic field doesn't act like a KZ. This is like a KZ, um, 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 uh, like a KZ momentum. So for example, inversion. For inversion, inversion doesn't change the magnetic field, and you get this type of um, symmetry in the magnetic field Hamiltonian. Um, uh, MZ, MZ also doesn't change the magnetic field, and you get this type of symmetry. So the combination of the fact that some symmetries, like time reversal, change the magnetic field, some symmetries do not, and of the fact that you have this phase U, which can lead to different different group structures for the symmetries in the, in the uh, Hofstadter problem, basically gives you a whole array of non-crystalline groups um, um, that you can analyze in the magnetic field uh, behavior of, of um, a topological uh, state at zero field. Okay, so I don't have time to go through it, but I, what I wanted to point out now is what happens, what are the experimental, sort of the experimental consequences of 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 uh, of this of this um, of this uh, um, um, Hofstadter topology for the fragile state, and I think my time is quickly diminishing, so I'm going to go straight to 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 the physical picture. Okay, so I'm going to go straight to the physical picture for the twisted bilayer system. So I mentioned 
before that the two active bands for the physical bilayer system roughly act, roughly have the Vanya center of a, um, of uh, one band in a pseudomagnetic field of an up spin, for example. It's all those, there's no spin, uh, pseudo spin in up magnetic field and, uh, and uh, down pseudo spin in down magnetic field. And this is a picture that comes from this Shidai's uh, paper. So this is, this is kind of like, these are pseudo magnetic fields and these, these basically zero modes here are kind of the active bands. And the Vanya centers uh, of these uh, bands I showed you, one of them moves in one direction, the other one moves in the other direction. And this is consistent with basically failing, you know, a pseudomagnetic field up and a pseudomagnetic field down. I want to point out that, so this, so you can think of these as the active bands, and you can think of this as the gap between the active bands and the passive bands, these are the passive bands here. Think of this as the gap between the active bands and the passive bands. This is a pseudomagnetic field, not a true magnetic field. So this gap is turn number zero in this pseudomagnetic uh, field. Why? Well, this is up magnetic field. One Vanya center is in up magnetic field. The other Vanya center is in down magnetic field. C to Z symmetry switches them and protects the crossing of the Vanya centers. But basically the moral of the story is that, you know, this is the single particle gap between the passive and active bands of graphene has turn number zero. Now let's see what happens as I add a magnetic field in one direction. As I add a magnetic field in one direction, at intuitively at um, this gap, one, this gap will grow, this magnetic field would add to this pseudo magnetic field, this gap would grow, this gap would, would um, 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 diminish because it's, the, it's in the opposite direction. The external magnetic field is in the opposite direction to the pseudomagnetic field. And this gap would diminish. At some point it would close and it would uh, reopen to give a full turn number one between the two active bands and the two and the other passive bands. So basically this tells you that the single particle gap of, of turn number zero is not stable uh, here um, because this, you know, this, there's, there's some topology in these two uh, active bands. Topology is different than turn number topology, but it's still, there's still some um, topology given by the fact that it's an up magnetic, it's a, it's a one band in an up magnetic field, pseudo magnetic field, the other band is in pseudo magnetic field down. And this gap at zero is not stable. And at some point it closes and reopens to a turn number one gap per value per spin, which would mean turn number four, if I take into account all values and all spins. I don't have time to go through it, but there's, you know, we did some calculations on realistic, uh, on models such as uh, you know, four band models and on realistic 10 band models from, uh, from uh, uh, Sentel's uh, uh, group uh, and Ashwin's group um, to confirm this. But basically the moral of the story is that that if I was to plot this in a fan Landau fan diagram at some angles, what you'll see is that that the gap that's a single particle gap, okay, gets interrupted by a four turn number four gap or one per value per spin coming from charge neutrality. So the single particle, and this is very again very um, uncommon. Usually, single particle gaps, if you don't have topology, don't get interrupted. There's no reason why they cannot sustain themselves in hostile or magnetic fields. So a single particle gap get interrupted by a turn, by a turn number four, because we've, we've established that it's four or one per value per spin gap is one of the, um, we say one of the signatures of the fact that the um, uh, topology is, is um, there's topology in the lower bands. Okay, so now I'm gonna quickly go through the experimental evidence of this. So again, uh, this will be talked by, uh, this will be uh, presented by Shaba uh, at uh, 6 p.m. But the moral of the story is that, that instead of going to the first magic angle, you go to the second magic angle where unit flux is achieved at 4.5 Tesla rather than at, um, at 30 Tesla. And in this case, you have eight sets of four bands connected in a single particle model. If you add Hartree Fock consistently, um, you get um, disconnected bands in sets of two times four times value times spin. This Hartree Fock you find out if you add it so consistently breaks C to C, C to symmetry, but not C to, A, C to T. 
uh, well, the Hunter fog that we added broke C3X symmetry uh, self consistently. Um, the rock points exist, they kind of move away from high symmetry points because of C3Z, but this fragile topology is still maintained by the arguments that we had um, uh, before. And I don't have time to go through it, but Shabo will. But this is the, the um, uh, plot of the lambda level. So you can clearly see a 4,0 lambda level crossing the single particle um, um, gap well, many single particle gaps, and this is the prediction is they'll cross many single particle gaps. But you can clearly see the four comma zero crossing this, for example, zero, zero, two single particle gaps. So this is four comma zero. It goes all the way to zero here. Notice the magnetic field has gone to zero here. So it crosses the single particle gaps, interrupts the single particle gap, just like the uh, uh, predicted um, behavior for a, a zero field topological state in magnetic field. And there's several other lambda levels that have these type of crossings that can be matched to the um, uh, twisted by layer um, band structure at um, at um, um, at this angle in magnetic field. The next thing that I want to point out is experimental evidence for having a churn number at twisted double by layer. So as I said, this is a valley churn number. So edge experiments are uh, you have churn number plus two from one value, churn number minus two from the other value, counter-propagating gas states can't do. Um, they, there's no reason why they would um, uh, not gap. But what you can do is you can apply magnetic field, you can apply uh, um, you know, different potentials, different electric fields to make this gap larger or smaller, the churn number two gap larger or smaller. And for each of them, the prediction is that an electric field, then a magnetic field would close this gap because the value churn number gap, it's churn number gap, would close this gap at flux one half of the unit cell. And these are the plots. See, for every, for every magnetic field, for every electric field, these are different electric fields, there is a clear sign of gap closing around the same 0 0.5. It doesn't matter, there's, 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 several, there's other samples also. It doesn't matter the value of the uh, electric field, which basically governs the different values of the gap. Uh, at zero uh, uh, magnetic field, the gap closes as I, as, as uh, well, as uh, Will um, in the Tux group um, um, changes the magnetic field to exactly to, to zero, 0 0.5. Um, and I think I basically took more of the time that was allotted to me, so I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Andre, for this very impressive talk and very impressive results. I have a question from Mohamed Alesi. I will try to unmute him again, but I don't know if it will work. Mohamed, can you speak? Oh, and, and by the way, I wanted to point out also that, uh, that uh, I got encouragement to look at the, uh, the host data problem also by, from Pablo. I didn't want to, to, miss, uh, to miss that. So thank you. Okay, I will read the question because for some reason I cannot unmute him. Sorry, but I have a trivial question. What is interesting if the Landau level gap interrupts the single particle gap? What is what? What is? What is interesting in the fact that the Landau level gap interrupts the single particle gap? Yeah, so it's not, so it's not the, the so it's not the, the it's, the, yeah, so this is a good question. So it's not, it's, it's not a Landau, it's basically a churn, um, um, yeah, so, so it's, it's, if this was a single particle gap without having, you know, if, so if this, if at zero field, okay, you had no, this was a single particle, this is a single particle gap, but turn zero, right? If at zero field here in this picture, you didn't have this, you didn't have this, the topology where, intuitively we can go through more exact uh, statements but intuitively the topology of the two active bands is that so what you what what you can do is you can go on the aa side so you can take the bistrotron mcdonald hamiltonian and you can you can make an approximation um, a linear approximation and find that is the hamiltonian of a pseudo magnetic field which um, after a basis transformation anyways uh, of a pseudo magnetic field where the two uh, uh, bands, the two active bands, um, 
basically feel opposite pseudomagnetic fields. And C2 times time reversal basically relates one to the other, and that's why topology is actually um, um, uh, protected. So basically, you have this single particle gap, okay? That's a turn number zero. So normally, turn number zero single particle gaps, okay? If I had a band of turn number zero single particle uh, between, between, between any other gaps, between any other bands, the, the gap is turn number zero and has no topology. There is absolutely no reason why it should be, um, um, why it should uh, diminish or be closed by magnetic field, okay? So for example, here, if you look, Here, if I have if I had two trivial bands, the there's the, the single particle gap that sits here is actually protected. It doesn't it doesn't diminish. It doesn't uh, change. It might change a little bit, but there's no reason why it should basically um, become gapless. If you have topology, as I mentioned, if you have topology, there's some constraints on the magnetic field. For example, this is the some twisted bilayer Hamiltonian. Um, where the gap has to close, and we can go through more. Um, um, you know, we can we can we can explain we can explain it more uh, um, analytically. But this is a, a twisted bilayer uh, graphing Hamiltonian where the gap has to close. For example, here, this is um, uh, this is a system where these bands have the topology, trivial topology. And you can see the gap doesn't close the magnetic field. And this is a system where the bands, even with, with um, um, while having basically similar dispersion to the ones that zero topology, have exactly the topology of twisted bilayer graphene, and the gap closes. So basically, the idea, the heuristic explanation in this magnetic field picture that I uh, um, that I like is to 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 show you that an electric, that an external field. Uh, collapses one of the pseudo, pseudo uh, um, uh, magnetic fields and makes the one of the Landau, one of the pseudo Landau gaps uh, uh, vanish and switch sign. And then you get basically that the turn number zero gap that was before has suddenly collapsed and given rise to a turn number uh, 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 one gap. So normally single particle gaps between, between two bands don't need to collapse or they go, they never collapse unless there's some topology at zero field in that gap. And there's this, another que question from uh, Subir Sadzev. I allow him to talk. Subir, can you talk? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, great. Okay. Um, so uh, in the one of the very first papers by Pablo, there was a problem with the degeneracy of the Landau levels uh, at nu equals zero and also at nu equals two. Uh, mm -hmm. There seemed to be a factor of two missing. <clears throat> um, at nu equals zero, I think they measured fourfold degenerate as opposed to eight, which is what you would project. Uh, has that issue been resolved now? Um, I'm not sure. This I think that that was I think what you're mentioning is is was weak magnetic field, right? So like so basically, so I guess there could be yes. all kinds of symmetry. Yeah, here I'm basically this this magnetic field would be like for example in twist in twisted bilayer um, in twisted bilayer at the first magic angle, this this magnetic field would be 31 tesla that would do this. Okay, so, but, but in these current experiments, the you see all uh, the spin, the uh, the valley, and the mini valley quantum numbers, all accounted for properly. Uh, in I mean in yeah so in this so I guess so um, in this ex in this experience we understand basically I think you know most of the phase diagram um, uh, we understand this you know the magnetic field is very small compared to like you know thirty tesla in this field because we need a lot smaller field to get to the hostile limit. But you know, for large fields, for example, we sort of understand. Uh, you know, and for even larger fields, we understand the the, the diagram is coming from um, you know just single layer, just basically um, single layer. So I think there's. I'm, I wouldn't say that we understand everything, but I think I think there's yeah there's more more. We don't. There's not very many but many body effects um, here, like quantum warfare, magnetism, et cetera, 
in this at this at these fields so far. So I wouldn't say I haven't focused on the small magnetic fields. You know, and the, the zero modes are not basically right. So this, this this all this stuff is for large magnetic fields that basically will kill the single particle gap. Right. So I so I I, I can't comment on the small uh, magnetic field of experiments of Pablo's if uh, they're understood. I think I think he can, but I I because I, I don't know. <clears throat> But the large magnetic field is understood without any correlation effects, is what you're saying. Well, the, the, you do need some correlation effects for the large magnetic field here, for, this, for these samples here. So for these samples, you do need some large, and as, but as, as you put some correlation effects into, into the theory, uh, you start getting uh, agreement with, uh, more agreement with the experimental things for very large magnetic fields. So, so very large magnetic fields meaning somewhere here, 16 Tesla. So 16 Tesla, you need correlations in the theory to, uh, to understand, uh, to understand the, the spectrum. But um, what we're focusing on is, is not very small. So you're not looking at um, just you know, the Dirac points, the zero modes of the Dirac points, not, not incredibly large. So you're not looking at just what a uh, single layer um, times two does. Um, and we're looking at basically fields necessary to close the single particle gap between the first set of you know, the active bands and the passive bands, which are you know, around, around this, this region. Okay, thank you. There is another question by Oscar uh, Valek. I allow you to talk, Oscar. Can you talk? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hey, Andre. Um, you nicely showed that the gap was closing for the uh, bilayer, I think double bilayer sample, um, but it wasn't exactly zero. Uh, it, it was a, it kind of achieved a small value. At, was it half of flux quantum? Is this due to non pyrals terms? You think? Yeah. Yeah, that could be the yeah, that that. Yeah, that could be one. Um, yeah, it could be. It could be non pyro So yeah. So you're. So Os so Oscar basically um, rightly pointed out that all of this is in the non. This is in the pyro uh, um, uh, approximation. So if I have non. Yeah. If I. It could be due to non pyro term, or it could be due to interactions. We don't fully know. So interactions. So okay. So so there's something that I didn't mention here. That for example, so if you take. So you see, if I take, if I take the valley k, which are number, it has it has it it has this uh, behavior, right? Like the turn number two cannot sustain itself. The turn number of valley k prime is minus two. It cannot sustain. So if, if I would put them together without interactions, I should get a closing at field smaller than 0 0.5, some field smaller than, right? Just because of some slow. But actually, if you add interactions, it turns out that this pushes just because of, you know, um, this Hutterfoc uh, uh, um, terms, it pushes basically the, with interactions, the phase diagram looks like this. And the interactions push this a little bit, uh, uh, well, it. not a little bit, actually, push, push it uh, for, for large interactions, for in u larger than the gap here, for example, it pushes it all the way to 0 0.5. And there's other terms that can push it uh, um, um, above it. But yeah, I think this might be actually to, this might be due to non pyrolyst terms, which I haven't thought about, but you're right. All of this is in the pyrals. It's in the pyrals. Even these faces, u, this projective symmetry that are in the pyrals approximation. And they depend, they depend on the phases. Like the structure of the hostile butterfly looks different for different. So, right. So if I had, right. So if I had, uh, yeah, it looks different for different. Uh, basically, pyrrole phases which depend on where your orbitals are. So it's a good question. I haven't thought about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I think we have to close this session because the next uh, talk is uh, in ten minutes or eleven minutes. So uh, let's thank Andre again for fantastic talk and all the participants of the discussion and we shall see you again in a short time. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.
Thank you. I finished the, the session. Yeah, you can finish. Okay, thank you very much.